I'm absolutely fascinated by something Ben just told me. What's that? Well, apparently his contract with Carter Bowden represents a great deal of money. That's right. $25,000 a year just to paint. Mm-hmm. Isn't that rather a handsome sum for a relatively unknown artist? Funny you should ask. Why, do you know something that I don't know? Not really, but uh, you do agree that's an awful lot of money for a person like Carter Bowden to pay for exclusive representation of an artist like Ben, who has, at best, a rather meager reputation. Well, it does seem that way, but then, of course, the galleries here in Springfield may do things differently than the galleries in Chicago that I'm used to. Well, that's another thing. It's my understanding that Carter is more than willing to release Ben from his exclusivity if your father can convince a Chicago gallery to give him a showing. How do you know that? Well, that's what Ben talked to me about when he came to my office earlier. Of course, I didn't, I didn't mention this to Ben, but I, I find it rather strange that an astute businessman like Carter would give up an artist so easily after paying so much to get him in the first place. Don't you agree? It's your question. You must have the answer. The only one I can come up with is that it wasn't Carter's money to begin with. And so, uh, consequently, he has no moral right to hold Ben to their original agreement. Well, well, well. It wasn't Carter's money. Then whose money could it possibly be? Okay. Amanda. <laughs> Certainly a possibility. Vanessa, I hope you never mention this to Ben, because I know for a fact, from other conversations we've had, that he has no idea that his wife may have underwritten his contract. And knowing how proud Ben is, it could cause a very serious rift in an otherwise perfect marriage. was cheating, um, looking over your shoulder, but at least I got you to smile. Yeah, well, you know, we're here to study chemistry, Morgan, not play games. Well, well I'm going to learn a lot better from somebody that I can relax and be friendly with. You know, we talked about that, and I said as long as we were studying together, you were supposed to think of me as a teacher. Well, I, I can't do that. I mean, ever since you've gotten here, all I haven't thought about chemistry at all. All I've thought about is... Why are you acting so cold and standoffish? What I did to make you angry? Um, you didn't do anything. I must have done something. You're acting completely different last night. Yeah, and that was my fault. And it'll never happen again. We I mean, were stupid to go hiking around Laurel Falls and wasting all that time when time's what I've got the least of these days. How can you call hiking up to one of the most beautiful places on Earth and talking for the first time a waste? Because we're supposed to be pulling up your grades, Morgan. Not rehashing a bad time in my life. Well, if you ask me, I just think that that girl in San Francisco is just weird. But I was glad to hear that well, you were human like the rest of us and that you could get involved in someone even though you realized it was wrong. Talk about your put-downs. It wasn't meant to be a put-down. Well, it sure as hell sounded like one. And you know, it's almost funny coming from someone who always jumps to the wrong conclusions and thinks people are trying to put her down and call her a child when they're only trying to be considerate and helpful. Well, I don't know why you're making such a big deal. <laughs> and about yet it's perfectly all right if, for you to call someone uh, and say, I'm glad to see you were human enough to make a fool of yourself. Well, first of all, I didn't say that you made a fool of yourself. Well, that's what you meant. <laughs> and what is so damn funny? Well, I don't know. It's just that you're usually so <laughs> together and... Relaxed about things. I've never seen you fall apart like this. I'm not falling apart. Well, then why is your face all red? You know, I just don't understand this entire conversation. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Kelly, I could hear you shouting all the way up at the main house. Max, I can't tell you how I appreciate the work you've done in that daycare center. It, it's uh, something that's very close to my heart. I was sure of it. I never had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Dubois, but she must have been a remarkable woman. <laughs> yes, she was. 
I never realized, in fact, until I met her, what a void there was in my life. I also appreciate your translating all those notes uh, into English for me about Roger Thorpe, well, Arthur Green. Yeah, I'm sorry they weren't conclusive enough to give you the information you needed to to take legal action against the man you believe is his accomplice in the United States. I didn't think that uh, Roger Thorpe would be foolish enough to name Alan Spaulding as uh, his accomplice, even to his attorney, but I haven't given up. Do you have any other way in mind to uh, discover the truth? Yes, one, there's a Dr. Moreno who is an accomplice of theirs, and he's now traveling in the Orient, and if I can find him, then... Well, to your success, Mike. Yes, is something wrong? You're not drinking? Yeah, no, no, I, no, I, I was just thinking about Renee and something that she told me about my relationship with my daughter. Wonder what kind of advice she'd give me about whether or not I should continue looking for the proof I'm after and maybe lose my daughter forever. I'm afraid no one can advise you in so drastic a decision. No. I can't even advise myself. I keep shifting. But if I can find this proof that I'm after, I'm certainly going to. Do you know that you are in there? No. It sure looks like I do. Wait, 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 wait. I'll be right back. Elizabeth? If you don't say something soon, I'm going to think I met your double. No, it's me. Well, what are you doing? Well, how are you? Well, I'm stunned <laughs> at the moment. This is amazing. I, I, I'm with this attorney, Max Amboise, and he uh, saw me on my way to room, my room and told me to come over here. I would have never known you were in Switzerland. How are you? I'm fine. Oh, Mike, it's so good to see you. Well, you too, and I've got a million questions. I'll talk to you. I'll bore you with till the sun comes up. Let me uh, introduce you to this attorney, okay? Oh, I, I won't be intruding, will I? No, 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 no. We'll sit and talk to him until he finishes his drink, and then and then we can talk until my plane leaves in the morning. Oh, you're going back to the safe tomorrow? Yeah, first thing. Can we spend some time together? Before we go home? What's the matter? It's just good to see you. I miss being home so much. We'll leave it to you to figure the whole thing out. Well, I've told you, it's just a little theory of mine. Oh. Well, you are Amanda's financial advisor. You could easily verify an expenditure of $25,000. Yes, I suppose I could. If I were at all interested, which I'm not. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> Vanessa, if Amanda wants to subsidize her husband's career, that's entirely up to her. Ross. Your pretended indifference doesn't fool me for a minute. Well, all right. So you're not interested. I am. Could you find out for me, please? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, my dealings with Amanda are strictly confidential. Mm -hmm. Confidential? A little theory, obviously, isn't it? No, it's not. That's because that's exactly what it is. A little theory. And yet Amanda could very well be annoyed with me if she knew I was speculating on her personal life. So I would appreciate it if you would forget everything I've just told you. Oh, I already have. Well, I guess that uh, every artist thinks his next penny is going to be better than his last, but I'm proud of the things I have at the cottage now. Well, I'm eager to see your work, Ben. You should be, Daddy. You know what an eye I have for talent. <laughs> oh, uh, Philip, Justin, I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to talk to you yet. Well, you were busy talking to uh, Vanessa Chamberlain. Yes. Philip, Alan uh, and Hope just told me that you were going to be here. I hope we have some time to talk later. Well, I'm not going to be here very long. You see, my dad didn't tell me there was going to be a party. No. I thought it was just going to be the three of us. Oh, well, I'm sure it'll break up early, and then you'll have plenty of time to be with him. In the meantime, Justin and me, we'll keep you company. Well, I have to get back to the hospital. Look, would you do me a favor and keep an eye on Philip? 
Well, yeah, I'd be happy to. Justin, has this anything to do with that uh, patient of yours? I really wish you'd drive me home. Philip, it's like I told you before, I can't. There's no one there to look after you. Besides, you promised your father you'd spend the night. You'll have fun once you meet a few people here. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll call you in the morning, and if Alan hasn't made arrangements to take you home, I'll come and get you. Okay? Okay. Okay. Oh, Justin, before you go, has it got anything to do with that patient, uh, the one from Canada? <sighs> Logan Stafford? Yeah. Yeah, he's still on the critical list. Ross, did you know that Alan Spaulding knew Logan Stafford years ago? Uh, no, no, I didn't. Well, he did. Unfortunately, he doesn't know how to contact any of Mr. Stafford's relatives. Well, that's too bad. I'm sorry to hear that. Philip, you try to have a good time, huh? See ya. All right. Uh, good luck with Mr. Stafford. Oh, thank you. Kelly, when I heard all that shouting going on down here, I figured you were reading Morgan the Riot Act. No, no, I just let something get to me that, um, I shouldn't have. And laughing didn't really help matters. I'm sorry, Kelly, I just couldn't help it. Well, it won't happen again. Look, I, I gotta be going. Oh, okay. Listen, you're not leaving on account of me, are you? No, no, um, uh, Katie and Hillary are gonna come over for a swim, and then we're all gonna have dinner together. Oh. Are Dr. Bauer and his wife gonna be there? No, so we'll have the house all to our... Oh, damn, I totally forgot. What? Nola, uh, if Floyd couldn't make it, Nola was going to give me a call and I was going to go give her a ride. But I haven't been home, so even if she has tried to call, she knows I forgot. So call her now from here. Oh, good, 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 good idea. Listen, uh, what was up with Floyd that he couldn't make it tonight? Um, I don't know. She just said he had other plans. Well, Hillary was a lot of help. All she said was Kelly isn't here. Huh. Well, I don't see why you just don't let me drop you off. And if you want to, I can pick you up on I the way back. I said no. Too. I've already made plans with Kelly, and I can't leave here until he calls. You know, the only reason that I'm going out to, with my buddies tonight to have a couple of beers is because I thought you wanted to watch that dumb three-part movie. It's not a two. dumb movie. Well, anything that takes three nights to, to get through is dumb to me. Oh, would you get your boots off the bed? Get those dirty boots off the bed? Come on. Don't you have any respect for personal all property? Right, get right, them off. All right. Hey, there's no harm done. Oh, Jesus. I'll get it. I'll get it. Well, I guess I can forget about Nola helping me with the dinner dishes. I just heard her making plans to get picked up. Here, I got an extra piece. I thought yeah. you might like it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that wasn't very nice of her to uh, leave you like that with all the uh, desserts and coffee to serve by yourself. What could I do? The princess said she needed an hour and a half to get ready. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? You know, the guys on the second floor, they were all complaining because Nola took so long in the bathroom she tied it up, you know? You know, if you don't mind me saying, they were a little upset about the cold coffee, too. Floyd, do you know what's the matter with Nola? She's always had airs, but she never snapped at the boarders whenever they asked for anything before. I don't get it at all. You know, here, Noel's sitting in a lap of luxury here, and uh, it's like it's not good enough for her, you know? You know what I think? Hmm. I think our little Nola needs a man to answer to. She should get married, have a couple of babies to take care of. She'd get rid of those airs fast enough, you see. Well, that was Kelly. He's going to be by in about 20 minutes. Oh, hi, Mom. What are you doing here? Well, I'm talking to Floyd. Well, uh, uh do you think you could talk someplace else? Because I've got to get ready. Hmm. Excuse me. Uh, Floyd, I don't think you should keep your friends waiting. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, well. See you later, Nola. Uh, hey, don't forget, you know, if I... Had known that you didn't want to watch that three-part movie tonight, we could have done anything you wanted to. <laughs> 